This is chapter 18 and chapter 19 of the book. This is it. The art of metaphysical demonstration. And you might call it the art of receiving answers to your prayers. This is what it's been about. These are the last two chapters of this particular book. It is talking about praying, really, praying. How do you get answers to your prayer? And the summary of all of this is really whatever moves you to the point where you believe what you have prayed for is already, already received. The text says, as you have believed, so you receive. Belief comes first. Belief comes first before the receiving. And vain repetition is prayer without belief. When it is believe, then you act in accordance with that prayer. You act in accordance. That you will intuitively know what it is that is to be done by you to bring about the answer to that prayer, to be in alignment with that prayer. And so you intuitively know what it is. But the prayer, when you pray, there is the prayer that's prayed until the feeling comes, until the mood comes, until the sensing comes, that you know that you are, you've been heard, and the answer is the feeling, the mood. And sometimes, according to another writer, one assumes that the answer has been heard. You assume that the answer has been heard. The, the answer is assumed to be there. You assume. You affirm that you've been heard and that when you're heard, you will receive an answer. You assume that. And this reading is not a matter of reading it, but of practicing the principles. That's, that's the difference, because there's so many things that you can read and put them down and then forget and go on and read something else. And many people do that. They've read a lot. We, we call it having a lot of head knowledge. There's one point in this item that Dr. Murphy talks about the aspect of... Um, an individual who hears a statement about an individual dying, a person about an individual dying. And I will say, I've been in situations um, where I've walked into the rooms of individuals who had been told by a doctor that they would be dead in a certain length of time, or that I've walked into the room where a loved one actually asked me to visit, um, in this case, a mother who they expect to be dead within like a matter of hours. And I walked into that room and I got there and spoke with the lady, asked her questions and all kinds of things. Uh, that lady left the hospital within a couple of days after the time I was there. And she remained alive long enough to get her house, her will, um, her affairs in order. And then she passed away. Then she passed away. She told her family um, her wishes, because I had visited her, she called me an angel, and that she wanted me to do her eulogy, her f uh, final rites, if you want to call it that, her funeral, preach the eulogy. It was an amazing experience. Another individual came to me, and the doctor had given him 
um, six months to live. He had a blood cancer. And I prayed at that time. The church around me prayed at that time for that individual. This was in 1982, well, actually 1986, 87. And this is 2020. That individual is alive to this day. Another individual between 82, 83, 84, when I was at a church in Bristol, New Jersey. Actually, it was my wife. The doctors had told us she had three years to live. Another time, we had had an incident where she was only, um, had one night to get through a very difficult time. And as Dr. Murphy said, rather than having the image of death, that was projected by what the doctor said. We put forth the image of life. And in both of those instances, because uh, she's my first wife, um, but she's alive to this day. So I just have seen miraculous, what we call miracles, but we also recognize that it is scientific prayer. It's knowing how to pray. I've seen God deliver and give many, many blessings, financial blessings and everything else in disregard. And so that's why I'm talking about this. I've seen it not only happen for me, but I've seen it happen for other individuals as well. So that's why I'm talking about this. I've got testimonials of individuals who've done affirmations, who've done prayer, who've done meditation, People who've gone to school and went back to school and got their degrees and everything else. People who've done businesses. I've uh, got some going on right now at this very moment where miraculous things have taken place. And that's what I want you to do, the same thing. And so chapter 18 and 19 of This Is It. Chapter 18 is entitled Renewal of the Mind. You may transform your mind you may transform your body. You may transform your affairs through the water and through the spirit. John the third, third John, by re-educating the subconscious, the water. Uh, one way of getting at the subconscious is by affirmation. That is, saying a thing over and over again. This is the way that with some, but all these affirmations are only abstractions. What is needed is something concrete, an inner perception, a firm conviction within yourself. You must actually feel as the doer and the seer, this is the spirit. So what Dr. Murphy is saying is that to just keep repeating an affirmation, that's one thing. You're not just repeating it. You, there's a need for the affirmation to be to the point that it actually changes the feeling. All of this as it talks about the subconscious mind, it has to change the feeling, the feeling, the mood of the individual. That's vital. Uh, that's vital. And the text says, let the weak say I'm strong. The strength that one must feel is an inner strength, an inner strength, an inner knowing. That comes from spirit. And so the word is almost an invitation an invitation for spirit to come and strengthen one from the inside out. The words are opening the door so the spirit can come and come already inside of us, but to awaken the spirit that is inside of us so that we're consciously aware of God working in our lives and that life giver will come, that power that is within, that intelligence that is within will shine out, will shine out. So that's what we're talking about here. If you desire to be a good teacher of the law, the following suggestion could be used. Close your, eye, close your eyes, which shut out the evidence of your senses. Steal the mind by dwelling on God. Ask yourself, what does God mean to me? The answer automatically comes, God is love, beauty, infinite intelligence, omniscience, omnipotency, omnipresence, and all wisdom. Then feel yourself to be the great teacher. You must feel the reality of it. 
The joy and thrill must come through your veins with the mood of actual accomplishment. Feel yourself to be this great teacher. It is as if you went to the theater, came home, sat down on the couch, closed your eyes, and begin to review all the scenes in the contemplated mood. You hear the voices and you hear and see the beautiful scenery, the lights, the costumes. You're witnessing that which has already taken place. Prayer is contemplating the reality of the wish fulfilled and reacting to the joy that it is finished. It is finished, John 19 and verse 30. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalms 100 and verse 4. Now you're born of water and of spirit. This is what it means to be born of water and of spirit. It's like a womb experience. A womb-like experience. You're coming forth. It's like coming out of a tunnel. You're coming out of the womb, out of a tunnel, into a new dimension of life. When we pray, it is essential that we realize nothing is achieved by desperate effort. We grow not by trying to grow, but rather by permitting the fact of growth to assert itself or to be manifested in ourselves. We grow not by making ourselves grow or trying to grow, but by permitting the fact of growth to assert itself or to be manifested in ourselves. We permit it to take place. We allow it to take place. A person cannot become the great teacher or healer by any direct effort. Not by any direct effort. It doesn't happen like that. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. It's like saying that, you know, I can read this item and even I, I can't make it do anything. Not for myself, not for you, not for anybody. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14 and verse 10. The result is due to an attitude or mood of the mind that the wisdom which is ever present is made manifest in us. We do not create wisdom. We do not create virtue. We do not create knowledge. We reform and reverberate these attributes by renewal of the mind thereby releasing ever-existing principles and qualities into manifestation. This is what we are praying for most of all, most of all. Now let me do chapter 13, this, uh, chapter 19, excuse me, it is on meditation. Meditation. The discipline of looking inwardly is meditation. Remember we did affirmation. It's more than just repeating the words. It's feeling them. And so what I do is that I meditate and I have my eyes closed. I sit, play music. And then I silently affirm various meditations. I silently affirm various words. So rather than doing what I did before, where it was on uh, before a mirror, I may silently, within my mind, recite, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The discipline of looking inwardly is meditation. What we understand, we do naturally. What we do not understand, we force ourselves to do. Students so often tell the teacher how hard they tried. The very effort meant failure. For meditation is always effortless. Tension, exertion, or force result in failure. 
An excellent way to steal the mind is as follows. Imagine yourself on a mountaintop looking into a lake. In the placid surface, you see the sky, the stars, the moon, and those things above the earth. If the surface of the lake is disturbed, the things seen are blurred and indistinct. Thus it is with you. You are not still, not at peace. And the answer to your prayer comes only to the man who dwells with all tranquility of joy of already having received that for which he prayed. Meditation is the internalization and the internalizing of consciousness. It is a pilgrimage within. If an eight-year-old child can operate the law successfully, then we can. We first must become as a little child. Half an hour a day spent in meditation upon your ideals, goals, and ambitions will make you a different person. In a few months' time, the gentle, silent acknowledgement comes that God is within you, that the Spirit of Almighty God is now moving in your behalf, and that which you long to be, to possess or do, is already a fact of consciousness. Man actualizes this state by feeling the thrill of accomplishment. When he has succeeded, he will no longer be worried, anxious, or apprehensive. Moreover, he will not ask anyone for advice because he will be under compulsion to do that which is right. His subjective mind compels him to take all the necessary steps to the completion of his goal or objective. After prayer, if a man is still doubtful and begins to argue with himself as to which course to pursue, it means that he has not fixed the desired state in consciousness then let him go back again and dwell in the reality of it. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a man greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew 11, 11. This means that any man who prays successfully and touches reality by getting into the proper mood or feeling is greater than the wisest man. Most of us live life looking outwardly. The wise man looks inwardly. The disciplines of looking inward are termed together meditation. Detachment is the key to meditation. That is, we must sever ourselves completely from all worldly beliefs and opinions and focus silently upon our ideal state. It is the effortless effort which causes the you, causes us to flow toward that which we realize without conflict. Detachment does not mean that we give up what few earthly possessions we may have. It means that we must give up possess- possessiveness in ourselves or release the attachments that peculiarly limit us to a human viewpoint in all matters. Be still and know. Stillness is not only keeping quiet. It means that the causes within the self by which the inward life is rendered discordant have been removed. It indicates that there must be no inner dissonance, but rather when man goes within himself, he must find perfect and abiding peace. Knowing that God is within himself makes man alive in a world that is ever peaceful. The lack of it makes him live in a series of conditions which grieve him to the end. He fusses about things which, if he saw them differently, would not only cause one moment of unhappiness, would not cause one moment of unhappiness just by seeing them differently, seeing them is already worked out, and then the unhappiness would not be there. Every day of our life, we should meditate on beauty. Every day of our life, we should meditate on love. Every day of our life, we should meditate on peace. We should feel that these qualities are being resurrected in us. As we meditate daily on our inner beauty, let us feel that we are Jesus Christ. The illumined man 
Let us actually conjure the mood that would be ours. Were we actually doing his works and healing the blind, the halt, and the lame? As we walk the earth, we must sustain this mood or conviction that we are Jesus and those qualities which he portrayed will be resurrected within us. They were always within us. This state of consciousness is not born of woman. Jesus is born out of the imagination of men out of the imagination of women, and nowhere else. It is the second birth of spiritual awakening of an individual. The birth of Jesus the Christ truly takes place in a person as he or she practices the disciplines and meditates on the ideal state. By moving inward, the mystic finally finds the real. As he goes inward, he realizes first that the thing called the body is very unreal. And this earth upon which we are seated becomes unreal. The external life becomes a dream. The internal life awakens and moves further and further inward. Finally, it seems to merge and moves farther and farther inward. And it finally seems to merge. Let me read that one more time. The external life becomes the dream. The internal life awakens and moves farther and fur further and further inward. Finally, it seems to merge. And suddenly, the meditating self perceives that by going inward, it has found the universe. By going inward, it has found the universe. By going inward, it has found the universe. The suns, the moons, the stars, the planets are within. For the first time, he knows that planets are thoughts, that suns and moons are thoughts. And also he apprehends that his own consciousness is the realization which sustains them all. Temporarily in space, we are moving the dreams of the dreamers. Worlds, suns, moons, and stars are the thoughts of the thinker. His eyes are closed. He is meditating, and we are his meditation. It is consciousness meditating on the mysteries of itself. The inward journey ultimately leads man to the real. It leads a person away from the sense of the small I to the realization of the eternal self. The mystic mind, through meditation, finds the peace, the strength, and the fortitude for further steps. The practice of the discipline of meditation bestows beauty, love, peace, grace, and dignity upon every impulse, every attitude, and every act. In conclusion, let us meditate on these words, written by the finger of God, the ancient of days, which have come to us down through the ages. Ever the ageless wisdom. Hear the words. Of all existence, I am the source, the continuation and the end. I am the germ, I am the growth, I am the decay. All things and creatures I send forth. I suppose them while they yet stand without. And when the dream of separation ends, I cause their return unto myself. I am the life, the will of the law, and the way that lead it to the beyond. There's no one else. Of all existence, I am the source, the continuation and the end. I am the germ. I am the growth. I am the decay. All things and creatures I send forth. I suppose them while they yet stand without. And when the dream of separation ends, I cause their return unto myself. I am the life, the will of the law, and the way 
that lead it to the beyond. There is no one else. Namaste. Blessings to you. We have done the book, This Is It. We ended with the chapters on affirmation and meditation. And so we've looked at this whole aspect of finding answers to prayer, how that takes place, and how it can be a great blessing to you to practice this meditation. You might just practice it right now. As I say, let us go into the silence. God bless you. Take care. God will, God has, and God will continue to answer your prayers. Namaste. Bye-bye.